then you need to be a bootlicker too. Then you need to be a bootlicker too. Every cop that put on that uniform are willing to die. I don't know how many times I got to show you. These guys, some of y'all would never do this. They were willing to die. They were willing to die. They put their life on the line. I don't think that any of those officers were cowards. We say that those who develop positive feelings toward their captors and abusers suffer from a condition known as Stockholm Syndrome. And if there were ever domestic abusers walking among us in this realm, surely law enforcement agents would fit that criteria. And there's one thing we know about abusers. They are absolutely not heroes. But former officer Brandon Tatum goes so far as to say that even bad cops are more heroic than people in his chat room who criticize the Uvalde cops for being cowards. Bad cops are more heroic than half of the people in the comment section talking trash. I don't think that any of those officers were cowards. I put a badge, I, I put a hero on everybody with the badge unless they prove me differently. So unless you prove that you're not a hero, you're a hero in my eyes, just like people who serve in the military. Unless you uh, prove to me that you're not a hero, you put on that uniform, you swear that oath that 99% of people in America will never do, you're a hero in my eyes. So apparently everybody who signs on the dotted line to become a brainless order following conformist People who just do their jobs and do what they're told regardless of what is right are considered heroes in the eyes of popular YouTuber Brandon Tatum. And I want you guys to know that the reason we continue to explore the dangerous mentality of Brandon Tatum is because it's a mindset that applauds tyranny as that tyranny smashes the face of liberty. And many subscribe to that mindset, not just those who follow Brandon Tatum, it's quite literally an out of control epidemic of authoritarianism. So before we continue drilling into the perverted mind of Tatum, it needs to be understood that it's a well-established fact that acting Uvalde police chief Mariano Pargas on May 24th, 2022, absolutely knew that there were at least eight or nine children alive in the classroom where the shooter was located. And yet he still failed to take direct action to save them. Chief Mariano Pargas was the first to enter Robb Elementary School that day. Pargas arrived at the school at 1136 AM, just three minutes after the gunman fired his first shots. His officers ran in ahead of him to make an initial attempt to breach the classroom, but quickly retreated when shots were fired in their direction. Am I bleeding? Am I bleeding? Am I bleeding? Minutes later, Uvalde School District police officer Ruben Ruiz, whose wife was a teacher at Robb Elementary School, delivers vital information to Chief Pargas. The shooter is located inside his wife's classroom. Chief Pargas is then seen on surveillance video walking in and out of the hallway, taking cover behind his officers and next to a wall, failing to organize a response. Even when Officer Ruiz frantically heads back into the hallway, telling all these cops that his wife, Eva Morales, called him from inside the room and says that she's dying. <laughs> Ruben, 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 Ruben. She says she's shot, Johnny. It's Chief Pargas who calms Ruiz down and removes him from the hallway. As precious moments passed, the police on the scene can be heard looking to Pargas, asking him for direction. They want to know what the plan is. And Pargas tells them that he's waiting on the Texas Department of Public Safety. Are we just waiting for more tech or what's going on? They're going to come in. DPS Ranger. How's somebody in there going to come in? At 10, 12 p.m., nearly 30 minutes after the police arrived, Fourth grader Chloe Torres, trapped inside the room with the gunman, places a call to the 911 dispatcher. I'm in classroom, boys, classroom, mother. 112. 112. 112. 112, yes, ma'am. What's your name, ma'am? Chloe Torres, please hurry. There's a lot of dead bodies. The dispatcher immediately informs Pargas and the other cops on the scene that there are kids still alive in that classroom. Full of victims. Child call 911. The room is full of victims. Child 911. Child 911 call. Pargus grabs a radio and tells the cops in the hallway. The child just called if they have victims in there. But then Pargus steps back, 
walks outside and places this call to the dispatcher. Okay, in the call that you got here from the uh, from the one of the students, what was, what did they say? Okay, Chloe's gonna be. It's me, Chloe. Uh, she's in room one twelve. I'm gonna one twelve. She's with the next students that are still alive and then she got in the So how many are still alive now? Um, eight to nine are still alive. This proves that the chief and the cops in the hallway knew exactly what was going on inside that classroom, that there were kids who needed to be saved right now. Pargus enters the hallway and says, and then he walks back out. To this day, many of the high-ranking officers on the scene say they didn't know about Chloe's 911 call. At 12.20 p.m., Pargus can be seen walking outside the school, and the rest of the security footage shows that Pargus never goes back inside. Pargus also lied in a later interview, saying, The room was extremely dark, and we didn't know where he was, or the kids were standing, they were by him, or not knowing what was behind the doors. Oh, we knew we had, we had heard all those shots, but we didn't know whether there were kids in there, there were kids alive, there were kids, we, don't, we had no idea. Pargus did know. He knew that Ruben Ruiz's wife called and said that she was in the classroom dying, and he also knew that a child called 911 and said she was surrounded by victims. Now, let's listen to Officer Brandon Tatum defend these cowardly cops and you let the world know if you still want to continue supporting such a man. Now, I know some of y'all uh, are probably going to get your uh, your dreams lined up to hear me say that I was wrong, but the joke's on you. I wasn't wrong. Anybody who listened to anything that I've ever said, you know for a fact that what I said from the very beginning is that in hindsight, I think that the officers should have done things differently. Said it from the very beginning. Are the officers cowards? They don't look like cowards to me. They said they were just sitting in the hallway and they didn't do nothing. I'm going to show you on the video where they ran down the hallway all the way to the door and they ended up getting shot and retreating. The reason how I know some things that I'm talking about that most people may not be privy to because I have people that are on that team. I have people in the, in the eyeball range. So Tatum knows police on the team, possibly the very ones who were in the hallway who knew the horrors that were happening behind that unlocked door. Now, strangely enough, because he was getting so much heat in the chat room on his live show from people calling him out for defending cowardly cops, Tatum actually appeals to his popularity on his channel and radio show, takes comfort in his success as a YouTube star, and lets his audience know that he doesn't care if they unsubscribe. He'll still be popular. I don't care. I don't care. You can say what you want to say. Don't follow me. I don't care. You could put 77 minutes all you want. You could put cowards all you want. You could say I'm wrong all you want. I'm still Brandon Tatum. I still have a syndicated radio show all across the world. And I still got almost 2 million subscribers. And by the time you finish crying, I'll have 2 million subscribers. I'm going to make a video tomorrow and then the next day and then the next day and the next day. I don't care what naysayers say. I don't care what your mama say. I don't care what influencers say who ain't never been cops. I don't care what cops say who ain't never been on a tactical team. I don't care what none of y'all say. He doesn't care what anybody says. He's convinced he's right. The cops weren't cowards, and that's the hill he's willing to die on. So contrary to all video evidence, Tatum still maintains that the Uvalde cops were not cowards. Every cop that put on that uniform are willing to die. I don't know how many times I got to show you. These guys, some of y'all would never do this. They were willing to die. They were willing to die. They put their life on the line. I don't think that any of those officers were cowards. Now Tatum issues a veiled threat to a guy who blasts him and his wife in a super chat. Daryl said only a couple of years of law enforcement and this man thinks that he's major pain or something. Paul Blart, a small cop serving more time than you. That's why your wife looks like a, I don't know what, what okay, thank you for the $20. I bet you my life. You won't say that to my face. I bet you my life and your life that you won't say that to my face. Thank you for the $20, though. Tatum also believes that it takes a level of heroism just to put on a police uniform. Putting on the uniform means nothing. Okay. Some people who wear it, it are trash. 
Some people who wear it are heroes. Stop placing a banner on all of them. Well, let me tell you this. Do you wear the uniform? Probably not. I think it takes a level of heroism to put the uniform on to start with because that person, and especially if you're not wearing a uniform, that person have enough balls to do something you wouldn't even start doing. Going through the police academy ain't easy. You could call, you could say that person went rogue. You say whatever you want to say. Going through the police academy ain't easy. Putting your life on the line ain't easy. You can be a bad cop and you still, in my opinion, bad cops are more heroic than half of the people in the comment section talking trash. Bad cops are more heroic than half of the people in the comment section talking trash. Now think about this. Bad cops, cops who are corrupt, who violate their oath, who live every day to get one over on their fellow man by coercing them, threatening them, stealing from them, harassing them, cuffing them, and caging them for no reason are still more heroic than people who criticize the Thin Blue Line gang. I put a badge, I, I put a hero on everybody with the badge unless they prove me differently. So unless you prove that you're not a hero, you're a hero in my eyes, just like people who serve in the military. Unless you uh, prove to me that you're not a hero, you put on that uniform, you swear that oath that 99% of people in America will never do, you're a hero in my eyes. When you put that uniform on and you go outside of that patrol car, you're already risking your life. At any point, somebody can ambush you or whatever. You risk your life every time you put that uniform on and go outside. Now we see that Tatum is super sensitive about the fact that for 77 minutes, cops who knew there were kids who needed saving did nothing. There are leftists talking points I don't have to be a cop to see why cops or groups of cops failed miserably. 77 seconds, 77 minutes uh, to check to see if the door was even unlocked. Talk all you want. You can't defend that. They effed up. Ain't y'all, don't y'all see the trend? 77 minutes, 77 minutes. That's the, that's the war cross, 77 minutes. Just like leftists, man, just like leftists. 77 minutes from when? From when? From the shooting? Okay, the first four minutes, how does that, that ain't the cops fault. I was a fan of yours, but there was something wrong with you. A normal citizen uh, can be braver than a cop. Can't fathom how you judge this crap. Well, get your, well, bye. Thank you for the 20. I'm gonna go wipe my butt with your 20. No, I'm playing. Matter of fact, I'm going to take your 20 and give it away to somebody that needs it um, and that could use it. I used to be a fan of yours. I mean, I don't know what you what some people are thinking. I don't care. You don't want to be a fan of mine because you disagree with me. OK, that's fine. Thank you. You're just like a leftist. And citizens can be braver than cops. Rarely. I mean, think about what you're saying for a minute. I want people to think about what you're saying. Citizens can be braver than cops. Do you not understand that what you're saying is that a citizen has signed up to be a cop? So at minimum, a citizen is a citizen like you. They just decide to be braver than you by risking their lives every day. Cops, it's not like cops come from a different world. We get cops from over here. We get citizens over here. These are citizens like you. They put on a uniform. That that in and of itself is an action braver than if you don't put a uniform on. That in and of itself is an action braver than if you don't put a uniform on. So in the strange mind of Brandon Tatum, order following cops are braver than the rest of us. You can't risk your life at McDonald's or wherever you work. You ain't risk your life at Bank of America. I'm not saying your job isn't important, but you ain't risking your life. Cops don't just sit in the car all day and twiddle their thumbs unless you work in some ritzy part of town. It's drama every day. I mean, I just find it hard to believe that you people think that all these guys are just, they all these guys are cowards. They all scared at the same time. They're cowards. They're cowards. Come on, man. This is another bizarre one. Tech Ty says the amount of bootlickers in Tatum's chat is amazing. To which Tatum says, you need to be a bootlicker too. So I'm bootlicker. I clicked on that. <laughs> if you say you're a bootlicker, that ain't changed nothing in my life. I'm going to go down there and smoke a cigar and hang out with my wife and my beautiful son. And bootlicking, then you need to be a bootlicker too. Then you need to be a bootlicker too. Imagine telling your child when he or she grows up that you want them to be a bootlicker. How noble. Our world has a serious problem. Authoritarianism. The Brandon Tatums of the world are leading many down a dark path that will not end well for anyone. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know, and don't forget to subscribe to my private email list through my website, highimpactflix.com. If you want to further support the channel, the links are in the description and in the pinned comment, or grab one of these hard-hitting conversation-starting designs that you can put on any shirt, hoodie, mug, cell phone case, whatever you want. Also, consider becoming a channel member. I'll see you in the next video.